the Mob Museum is located in a historic building in downtown Las Vegas, and so we take our history of our city very, very seriously. Part of the Mob Museum's mission is to preserve the history of Las Vegas and to help tell that story for future generations. And so we do this in the museum, and we thought, well, why not do it outside as well, where people have an opportunity to see it as they're just walking by. Part of this mural was funded by the Nevada Humanities. They're just a great partner with not only the Mob Museum, but other organizations in town to do this very type of thing, which is promote the culture and the history of the city. And so we're very appreciative of Nevada Humanities' role in helping us make this mural. This is a mural of early Las Vegas history. I mean, when I mean early, it's from the 1800s down to the 1950s, 60s, and 70s over those walls over there. We would talk about the early Anasazi people that were first here, and eventually the Paiutes who lived here uh, way before any of this happened. And then eventually the railroad coming in and making a path from San Pedro, LA through Las Vegas, and then eventually up to Salt Lake City and then a huge boom was happening and then eventually Las Vegas started happening. We have more than 300 feet, linear feet, of mural here and we would love to bring it all the way up to the present day. And we were barely able to touch the surface of the history in that 300 feet. So we reached the 1970s, which was a huge time for the mob in Las Vegas, so it's kind of appropriate that that's where we ended. I think that will do it right there. Picking out what stands out to me the most and what can actually not only be a part of the story, but continue to tell the story as you see the image and go, oh, this is what happened during that time. But eventually that led to this part, you know, and I wanted to be able to not only do my research, but to look at certain images and go, that will trigger the next part of the story and hopefully keep telling it. It keeps unfolding somehow in different ways, but it still sticks with the story. I actually would challenge anyone to look at it and read it, but you got a really big feel for the Old West and the Southwest. And it kept popping out to me, that deserty kind of feel. And a lot of these colors have that deserty feel. When I think of Southwest, I think of the sun and I think of heat. And so I went with a soft yellow. Against the orange and the dark brown here, um, it really, really looks a lot yellow than it is, but it's actually more like a soft yellow. This orange is more like a red orange, but this actually was inspired by like, the mountains, like Red Rock. This brown is actually cowboy boots brown. And it's kind of cool that it just happened that way. And this aquamarine color, it's like a pool. And I can't help to like look at this color and think of those early Las Vegas pools. So I went with that as a background color to give it that Old West kind of feel. People will come over and, wow, this is amazing. This is so cool. And then I remember that my mom used to work there. Or I remember exactly when this was happening. Las Vegas grew dramatically during World War II, and so we wanted to be sure to depict that both two big things that happened during that time. One was the opening of the Army Air Base, which later became Nellis Air Force Base, uh, and also the basic magnesium plant out in what later became known as Henderson. And you know, in both of these places employed thousands of people. The magnesium plant employed a number of African American workers as well as women who were, you know, participating in the war effort. When men went off to war, women worked in these plants. It's hard work, grueling work. They became known as Magnesium Maggies. I keep thinking, why does she keep coming up? And I keep looking at her and it's Magnesium Maggie. I think that's what actually led to the design of the work. The big icon back then was Rosie the Riveter. And I looked at the color schemes for that. And there was just a lot of yellow, red, blues, and creams. But looking at the image itself, I thought maybe I can probably do something like that in that kind of style. So that helped me with the designing the, the, the original concept for this one. Uh, not a lot of people know who she was, and we had our own Rooted River here in Las Vegas, and it was actually Magnesia Maggie. We wanted to be sure to depict Hoover Dam in our mural because Hoover Dam was such an important part of our history. You know, they started construction on Hoover Dam in 1931 and completed it in 1935, and during that time, it employed you know thousands of people during the Great Depression. Very important, and it was a big growth engine for Las Vegas because people would let off steam after working for six days on the dam. They would come to Las Vegas to have a good time for a few hours, and so the, you know the dam was such an important part of our history. Employed a lot of interesting people who came and settled in Las Vegas after it was over. Someone was mentioning the drill, and he said that you know they were out there like 12 hours a day 
in 130 degree weather. Just this image alone says a lot to me. And I hope it does to the next person or anybody that looks at this image and goes, well, I wanna know more about this person and why is he included in this for some reason. I want that reaction and I want that curiosity to lead them to look at their phone, Google it or something like that. The 1950s and 60s in Las Vegas was just a huge time of growth on what became the Las Vegas Strip. Casino after casino opens up, uh, the mobs involved with many of these. Entertainment is a huge part of it, right? We have the famous Rat Pack with Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Sammy Davis Jr. appearing at the Sands Hotel. And interestingly, not on the Strip, a big part of that story was the Moulin Rouge. The Moulin Rouge was the first integrated casino in Las Vegas. It opened in 1955. It was only open for a short period of time, about six months, before it ran into financial troubles. But it was such a big story that it made the cover of Life magazine. And people all over the country were interested in the Moulin Rouge and, and interested in this idea that Las Vegas could become a more integrated community. It took a while to get there. It didn't happen right away, but the Moulin Rouge really got it started. We decided to, to wrap up the mural with a depiction of the movie Casino, both the real life characters who were here in Las Vegas and then the, the people who depicted them in the movie. And so you have Robert De Niro and you have Joe Pesci and you have Sharon Stone who are playing Frank Lefty Rosenthal, Tony Spilatro and Jerry Rosenthal. Casino is a movie, but it depicts a real life scenario that, that played out in Las Vegas in the 1970s and early 80s and it was a very important part of our story. So we thought, what a great connection between the Mob Museum and Las Vegas history. It's Nexus with the movie Casino. There's so much more to this. If you're willing to listen and there's a story to be told, you can learn a lot and then take it further if you wanted to.